Halloween's my favorite holiday, uh, pretty much because it brings all the cookie people together. Uh, they're my tribe. I got inspired to work in the film industry when I learned that you could do makeup effects. So I, I watched monster movies since the age of five and wasn't quite sure how those came to fruition on screen. I discovered a Lon Chaney book in my school library and that kind of showed work that Lon Chaney had done to transform himself time and time again. And I realized that was a job after I had watched the first Nightmare on Elm Street, which was really my launching point to wanting to do this. Through many years, I'd always wanted one of those gloves. Mark Patton travels the country to Comic Cons and film festivals, and so do I. And we were having dinner one night. And he's like, hey, Sean, uh, I think TSA was messing with my glove. I got to the hotel and pulled out a suitcase, and half the fingers were off the glove. I don't know what to do about it. I need it for tomorrow. Can you fix it? I was pretty bowled over, but I put on my poker face. I was like, yeah, I can, I can fix that. And I was able to make patterns off that original legendary artifact and then start replicating it screen accurate. Hey, Jimmy, you know what spurts my veins? What's that? When people invest all that money in their costumes and makeup, and then they put that terrible Halloween store blood on. Right? Yep, it's horrible. Yep, so we're gonna do something really cool. We're gonna show you how to make some amazing kitchen blood. Um, and for that, we're gonna need 16 ounces of dark caro syrup, McCormick brand assorted food coloring, and then 100% pure cocoa. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna throw half of the 16 ounce bottle of caro syrup in this cup. And you do want to get the dark kind. That's important. That looks good. And to tint this, we're going to use one full container of this assorted McCormick's food coloring. It doesn't come out quickly, so just be patient. Give that a stir. So you could actually stop here, but this isn't going to be any better than that Halloween store blood. So if you look at this, let me tilt this cup here a little bit so you can see this. It's really transparent. And if that's what you're going for, you can use that, but we want to take it a step further. Uh, we're going to add just under half of this yellow. So real blood, when it smears, it's got like an orange tone to it. Halloween blood typically just turns pink and it doesn't look very realistic at all. And this will give us kind of an orangey tone which looks a little more realistic, more arterial than your Halloween store brand blood. So we can already see that that's starting to look different. And to give it a little grimy kind of grunge, you want to use one drop of the green. This definitely is a little bit darker, but you'll note it's really transparent. But now we have kind of that orange smear going on that we didn't have before. Um, that's good. Now we need to combat that transparency. And to do that, we're gonna use the cocoa. All right, we don't need a lot of it. Got the spoon here. Just gonna use just a little bit. Just gonna pop that in there. Now typically, you actually wanna put the cocoa powder in first, but I wanted to illustrate a point to you. And that's that transparency versus the semi-opacity. And be sure when you're doing this to scrape the sides, the cup and everything, and make sure you get all that cocoa in there. That definitely looks a lot more opaque. Now we can this and see this run down the side of the cup and you can clearly see that this looks a lot more realistic now. Got some good good color going on there, good tone. And if you wet it, you can see that nice orange smear that it's got. And that looks really good. That looks like arterial blood to me. But that's our kitchen blood recipe. The horror scene is pretty strong in South Carolina. There's an amazing independent film community here. You have people like Tommy Faircloth with Horse Creek Productions. I want your soul. We have Eternal Ground Films, John Johnson uh, with Flesher, and then um, you have several other people in the community that make a ton of horror short films. Charleston, South Carolina is home to one of the bigger uh, horror film festivals in the country, Crimson Screen Film Festival. 
And as of late, you know, Hollywood has taken a shine to Charleston and, and other areas in South Carolina. So they've brought the Halloween franchise here. The most challenging makeup was probably on Whistler's mother. When it came time to apply the appliance uh, designed for it, the actress um, thought that she might be allergic to the adhesive that we we're gonna use. So I had to go back to the drawing board uh, in the middle of production and redesign the whole thing uh, in 2D and then apply that and the production loved it. In this industry, you do have to be able to adapt. I think for myself to keep current with new looks and techniques, I'm constantly learning from other artists. I'm pulling inspiration from many different places, whether it be uh, books, uh, YouTube videos. YouTube is an amazing resource. Uh, Instagram as well. There's some really cool stuff out there. Being that Halloween's my favorite day of the year and we just made some really cool blood, I'll show you how to put it on a makeup and dress it up and make it pop. So what I have here are some Bondo transfer appliances. You can actually buy these in the Halloween store. These are much better than the latex things. So you need to peel the backing off here. All right, I'm gonna put this on my lovely model. Place one here. Now I need to remove the backing from this. So I got some rubbing alcohol and a sponge. All right, now I'll go ahead and remove the backing from this appliance. i to fully saturate this paper so it separates from that sticky appliance. It is a lot like fake tattoos. There's one. All right, let's put on the second bite. This one right here. I'm gonna peel this guy off. Let's go ahead and put this second bite on. Same as before. Get some rubbing alcohol. And I'm gonna saturate the sponge. Take the backing off. Now we need to dress it with some blood. All right, so all I'm gonna do is put a little in the hole and just start painting it on. And there you have it, vampire bite. So if somebody is interested in breaking in business, have a body of work of something you're passionate about. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a couple things that you can showcase and look for your, your local union. You know, IOTC is an amazing place to start. Call them and see if you can come on as an apprentice or work with somebody and, and get your foot in the door.